Today, I am making prison wine. I'm gonna be going through what ingredients are needed, what materials are actually used, and of course, how it tastes. I can't promise that this is gonna be any good, but if you ever find yourself in prison, you might be happy that you watched this. Pooch, Pruno, or whatever names you've heard for alcohol made in the slammer, they all refer to the same thing. And while highly dangerous and against the law, I am going to unfold the secrets behind the art of turning sugar into wine through the magical process of fermentation. So my goal when doing this was to try to grab things that somebody in prison might have access to. I'm not gonna use any special tools or equipment. I'm literally gonna use what we have here and show you the most basic way that this can happen. This is not gonna be easy and it is not gonna be safe, so please do not try this at home. So what we're gonna do first is get the fruit added to a plastic baggie like this. And I'm not worried about taking the skins off because skin is actually where we'll find the wild colonies of yeast. I've got these sugar packets here. This is not an award-winning mead. This is prison hooch. Zip it shut. So now we've got this beautiful medley of fruit with oranges, apples, blueberries, strawberries, fruit cups, and sugar packets. Now we're gonna mash this up until it's evenly mixed. Theoretically, it could ferment on its own right from here. But one thing I read is that they will sometimes add what's referred to as a kicker, which is fruit that has just started to rot. And that's usually a sign that there's already a well-established colony of yeast. So if we add this in here, it's more likely to ferment quicker compared to using what's on fresh fruit. Throw in the kicker, make sure that's all mixed in good. So now we're not gonna ferment in this bag. We're actually gonna use a garbage bag and here's how we're gonna do it. I wanted to put this in something so it's easier to stand up just while I pour this in so I don't make a huge mess. Now we're gonna add a little bit of apple juice and a little bit of water. Here is what we're working with. No holes so far, so that is nice. We've probably got a gallon's worth of hooch here. And so the important thing now is to figure out a way to seal this while at the same time allowing gas to escape because as these yeast are converting these sugars into alcohol, this process of fermentation also produces carbon dioxide gas. If we didn't have a way for that gas to escape, essentially this bag would blow up and eventually pop and explode and it would be messy. It would for sure get the prisoners caught. They sort of just twist it and then they'll take a rubber band like this and just loosely wrap around the end. There, that should be good. I can feel with my finger that this can pretty easily open, but when I pull my finger out, it closes pretty tightly. So I did pretty much the same thing I did with this one, but added that mix to this jug. In terms of prison hooch, this is pretty much the Taj Mahal setup compared to this one. But assuming you can get your hands on a jug, a latex glove, and a rubber band, you're gonna be in good shape. So let's get it something sharp like a pen and make a small little hole. Not like that. I'm gonna try to blow this up and see if it's easier to... Maybe blowing it up was not the move. There we go, I think I did it. I'm just gonna blow this up and check to make sure that it works the way it's supposed to. So this is harder than it looks. Hopefully if you're a prisoner, you have access to a whole box of gloves. Okay, let's try this one. That's what we want. So this is exactly what we're going for. Now I'm gonna put this on top of the lid of this jug. Yeah, that should be good. So now we have the bag and we have the jug and these are the exact same recipe, but it'll be interesting to compare. First of all, both of these methods work. Second of all, how, how it'll actually taste. And because we have no actual brewing yeast, no yeast nutrient, no balancing acid, no bentonite, no stabilizers, no peptic enzyme, the final product's gonna be a lot different from my normal creations and the fermentation time is probably gonna be much longer. So my plan is to just give these a few weeks, let them sit, and then we'll check back and see how it turned out. Hey guys, so it's been 24 hours and unfortunately there are still no signs of fermentation. No reason to worry yet, we still have plenty of time, but hopefully this starts going in the next couple days. Three days later. All right guys, so I've been gone for three days and I just got home and I have something awesome to show you. At first it doesn't look like much because I totally thought that this would be blown up and same with the garbage bag. So I was nervous when I first looked at it. But when you take a closer look, you can totally see that those bubbles are starting to be produced. I guess the reason that it didn't blow up as much as I expected is because the fermentation just isn't happening as quickly as the meads and other experiments that I'm used to. I'm pretty sure this one is fermenting too. I guess there's only one way to find out. 
Whenever I pull samples, I like to use these turkey basters, and that's just one of the many small tools that make brewing a whole lot easier. Same thing with this stainless steel pitcher. Can definitely smell the alcohol. Ooh, yeah, really burns my nostrils. I can't wait to see how this tastes. That's really weird. So I can confirm that this is fermenting. I can taste the alcohol. I can barely strongly taste the alcohol. This is very much more like, like hot, burning, fusel alcohols. I'm not getting much sweetness left in this one, which tells me that most of the sugars that were originally present in here have been fermented. I have no idea what the percentage is gonna be. I think it's further along than I expected. And now let's try this one. Even though this is prison hooch made in a garbage bag, I still want to be careful about not exposing this to the environment as much as possible because I don't want this to get contaminated. No real difference in terms of flavor or sweetness, so these are probably around the same spot. But can confirm it is fermenting, there is alcohol. So now I'm just gonna let these guys sit until I no longer see bubbling. I have no clue how long that's gonna be. All right, well now it has been a week since we last checked on this and I don't see any more signs of bubbling. So for all intents and purposes, I'm gonna say that this is ready to go. And we actually got here a lot quicker than I expected. These wild yeast have been going to work. If you really wanted to, you could drink it right from this bottle or from this bag. But the issue with that is, is there's all this fruit and sediment from the yeast and ideally we'd like to get the liquid separated from that. So in the brewing world, we do something what's called racking where you basically take a siphon and you siphon out the liquid into either another vessel or bottles. But in this case, we're gonna to make a special filter out of something that can be easily found. So the idea I had was to take a milk jug and cut the top off to use as a little funnel. Then I'm going to take this sock and sort of just kind of fold it over the best I can. And now we've got a super simple little filter. So I'm going to bottle the pruno in this empty juice bottle and I'm thinking of just mixing both batches together in the same one. Remove this glove airlock. No weird smells and no signs of mold so we should be good to proceed. Pour this right in here. And you can see it's catching all that fruit and sediment pretty good, actually. Check that out, it worked pretty good. Now I'll set this aside and then grab the bag. This is gonna be kind of hard to do by myself. Taping this out will just make it a little bit easier to do by myself. Well, I guess we're just about done anyways. It's always nice having prison hooch splattered on your wall. So now this is all we have left. We might have enough more liquid in here for another bottle, but I don't have another bottle on hand. I'm not gonna drink this anyways. So I'm gonna get this cleaned up and then we're gonna have a taste. So this is the moment of truth. We've been waiting a long time for this. Now is the time we're gonna taste our prison wine and see how it actually turned out. I'm gonna do my best to describe the flavor and I'm just gonna be using these uh, tasting cups. So without further ado, Let's give it a try. Now, just a quick disclaimer, guys. Please do not try this at home, whatever you do. I'm making sure to be super careful. If you wanna follow along and try to make something good, check out my other mead making videos. Always make sure to do your own research and follow correct sanitation procedures. It smells like nail polish remover with a little bit of citrus. Here we go. It tastes like nail polish remover. It's got like a, a harsh bite that hits the back of your throat, then very subtle notes of citrus, and it's it's very bitter and very bitter and strong. Just based on the taste alone, my guess is that this hit maybe just under 10%. So yeah, I don't enjoy it. But without the proper equipment and ingredients, alcohol can be made. I think that's what's important here. So I'm gonna keep this bottle and save it. Not to drink, definitely not. But as a symbol and a reminder of how close to the sun we got, and to represent the limits of what's possible in the magical world of homebrewing. This was fun. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe for more tips, recipes, and experiments like this. Let me know what ideas you have, and don't forget to check out my website for even more resources.